All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add some functionality here to actually create a sphere. But before we do, I wanted to mention something. I have uh, self.close here as the method that's being called when I have a clicked signal for my close button. Uh, but my method is called close windows. So it just so happens that .close is a built-in method available on Windows, AKA self. So if I wanted to run this one, I would just need to put window here. And at that point, I'm, I'm calling this method. But close works just fine, so whatever, just in, in case anybody noticed that what I was calling was different than the, uh, the method name here. Okay, so let's look at creating a sphere in Maya. One of the nice things about working with Maya is we have access to the script editor here, which will report back all of the mail commands that you execute as you're just working normally. So we can go to create polygon primitives and I'll make a sphere. And we can see here, this is the uh, MEL code that we just executed. MEL is Maya's embedded language. It's uh, not particularly useful, doesn't have object-oriented uh, functionality. So typically everything that you would write in terms of a tool is gonna be the Python version. So conveniently, if I highlight the command name and then go to Python. If I wanted to look up the documentation, I can either Google like CMDS Polysphere or you can just highlight it, right click and go to command documentation and it will take you to the documentation page for whatever command you have just asked about. So there's gonna be arguments, AKA flags. In Mel they're called flags, In Python obviously they're called arguments. And then there's gonna be some usage, usage examples typically at the bottom of the documentation. So this is really, really useful because there's some things that are peculiar about a lot of these commands in terms of the order of arguments that they're expecting. So we can probably run into some good examples of that at some point uh, in the near future. I think move might be one of them, where it wants the coordinates that you're moving to first and then the object and then whether or not it's a, a relative or an absolute transform. Let me see if I just type in move might be useful. I think I'm just gonna have to Google it. So we'll scroll to the bottom. Yeah, so I would assume that you would want the object you're moving first, but in this case, you can see here, it wants the X, Y, Z coordinates. Uh, so anyway, it's, it's, things like this are just like, not necessarily intuitive, so it's good to be able to just look up an example. Okay, anyway. So now we have the polysphere command, and these are the flags in Mel, they're, they're flags. This dash R is radius. This is gonna be subdivisions in X, subdivisions in Y. What is the axis? The up axis here is up in Y. I'm not sure what CUV means, but it's, uh, CH is construction history, so one equals true. All right, anyway, we don't really care about this stuff. This is all just default values. Really all we're worried about in terms of our little code here is polysphere. So I'm gonna delete this. I'll come over and just keep this very simple. CMDS polysphere. So uh, one of the things that's worth mentioning is you've got to import maya.cmds as cmds. We're also going to be doing uh, maya.mel as mel. Uh, this is very useful if you if there's a few mel commands that are not exposed to Python. So every now and again you've got to uh, you got to just run the mel as is. So okay, there is the function that we will run when our make sphere method is called, which will happen when we push our make sphere button. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And there you go. So imagine a scenario where you don't wanna limit your user to making one kind of geometry. What if we wanna give them some options? What I'm gonna do is head over to my UI file. I'm gonna click out here in the empty space and then select this little icon here, which will delete the layout at this top form here. So now these are all going to be movable. I'm going to drag in three radio buttons and put them next to each other. The thing about radio buttons that's cool is if one is selected, the others will automatically deselect. So it's a way of, of isolating options to just one of several. And the way that you put them into a radio button group, which is how they are paying attention to the other radio buttons, is you select them, and you can see here in the object inspector, they are all highlighted. 
I'm going to right click and I'm going to select assign to button group, new button group. And then we've got our button group over here. In this case, I'm only going to have this one button group, so I'm not going to bother renaming it, but you could easily have as many button groups as you want. You just have to give them a unique name, or you can let Qt Designer manage that under the hood for you. I'm going to go ahead and set this one to be our sphere option. This one can be our cube option. And this one can be our cylinder. And I'm going to select sphere and then come down here to the Q abstract button section, which should look familiar. And then we'll go, go ahead and just uh, enable checked. And you can see now it's filled in. If I hit control R without doing much of anything else, we can just confirm that the behavior is gonna be mutually exclusive in terms of the selection. So that's all working just fine. Now we've got to lay this stuff out in a way that makes sense. So I know that these three elements here I'm going to want to have next to each other. So I select them and I click Vertical Layout. And I know that these I'm going to want to have next to each other as well. And then I would really like it if these two layouts could be together oriented vertically. I think, let's see, I'm going to grab this one. So if you get something inside, it can be hard to click on that little red edge there. You can eventually get to it, but you could also just grab something inside and then just come over here and whatever the layout is will be the parent there in this little hierarchy. So you can just grab that. I'm actually going to move it above so we can specify what we want. And then when we push this mix, we'll change this to make geo button. It will go and do it. So we're sort of ordering our operations vertically. And now what I want to do is if I were to just put this into a, a layout, these things will separate and I kind of want them to be together. So I'm going to go ahead and select my two uh, layouts there and put them into a row layout. So in this case, they will still, I believe, like if I were to come over here, get all this stuff and put it into a vertical layout and then put the whole thing into its own layout. Yeah, so they're going to separate. I don't really want to do that. I want them to be in the middle. So we'll grab some vertical spacers And then now that everything is in this configuration, I can hit this little icon right here, which will be our grid layout. And it will figure out that I want a row here, a row here, a row here, and a column, and a column, and a column. So if I hit Control R, now it's going to be nice and orderly, and everything will be there, sit in the middle. All right, so now I'm going to change this button to be Make Geo. And we'll change the text as well. So we'll save it, and in the next video, we'll take a look at updating our code to identify these new UI elements and adding the functionality to create this geometry.